what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Hi, welcome to On the Waterfront with Mariah Riggs. I'm your host, Mariah, and this month I'm really excited to be with Bri Poulin, who is the director and founder of Between the Willows, a queer-owned and operated theater based out of Burlington, Vermont. They have been an active community member of the Burlington arts community for over a decade, working with theaters across the state of Vermont. Currently, they are the seasonal Seasonal Associate Production Manager for Weston Theatre Company. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank and Production you. Manager Acting Director for Between the Willows' upcoming show, The Juniper Tree, which is in Main Street Landing, which is, which is a Street personally Landing. personal uh, personal coup for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Ryan, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. And yeah, thanks me. for having me. I'm so jazzed to be here. This is really exciting. <laughs> So um, we've known each other for a while, so we just have. ignore ignore our banter. The banter uh, is, is real. frequent and, <laughs> and real. <laughs> and yeah, and real. And real, so that's good. <laughs> um, so you know, I, this is kind of fun because I can kind of dig into uh, yeah. a little bit of your backstory. I'd love that. Um, <laughs> how did you How did you get into acting? Because you're from Vermont. <sighs> yes. Yeah. So I've been. Uh, I mean, I grew up in Essex. Uh, I went through the EWSD. I always say EWSD school district, so that's what it is. I went through EWSD. Uh, so I was at Essex High School and Essex Middle School, mm -hmm. um, and I was taught by Allie Perry. And so like uh, her and her partner, Andy Butterfield, kind of like really set me up for just this intense love for theater. I started out as a lighting technician, though. Um, for my first three years in middle school, I was like doing lighting, which was great. Which is my first love. Yes. So I'm, I, I so can So we're connecting that. on that. I can appreciate that. We yeah. connect on a lot. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah, so it, I, I did three years on lighting. I just kind of fell in love with making art. Um, but it took a lot of convincing to actually audition for something. I feel like uh, my freshman year of high school, we did You're in Town, and I was like, ah, sure. <laughs> um, and I spoke the audition. I didn't sing a, a word. Really? <laughs> but I got in. OK. And well. then I fell in love. That's that's where that's where it, it, I got hooked. So but 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 what drew you to it? Because, um, you know, I actually went the other way. Really? I started out acting a lot. And then you went into and like, then I and then set. I realized that it was literally going to give me an ulcer. And so I had to be behind the camera or behind the scenes in the back of the stage yeah. and not have to deal with the audience anymore because people always used to push me out onto the stage. And it just wasn't my thing. Yeah. So um, so so what made you, you know, come out and want to be on that stage and 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 did you like the applause? Did you like <laughs> I loved the attention, I feel like. I okay. but but also I think at the core of it, I, I've always liked creating. Mm -hmm. I used to like write short films with my friends and we'd like make little films like whenever we'd hang out um, and sort of like edit them overnight and then we'd be like put them on YouTube. And do I was you, like Do you still have Oh, I do. They're terrible. Well, I th I don't know if they do. I do have them, but like That's there are amazing. they're probably in the YouTube archives somewhere. Like I could probably source them up, and they're like terrible, like filmed on like an iPhone three or something. Yeah, but that's great. You did that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That. So I think that was really foundational for it. That was like pre middle school too. So. But that's yeah, and that's kind of how you learn to improv. Oh yeah. You know, you learn about the flexibility of character. Absolutely. You know, the physical acting, those kinds of things. And there's something very reflexive about seeing yourself on camera. Yes. After, so you develop sort of that body awareness. Like a hundred percent. That's so important as an actor, and you're like, oh, that looked like that. Yes. Oh, let's redo that. Yeah. Let's redo that shot because I'm going to try something different, and then you start learning how to like control yourself as an actor. And and with that, you know, you learn a lot of like really important life skills as well, just like communication with others and collaborating, and like I mean, we'd be chatting a lot, and I mean, we'd have scripts, you know, but like it'd be like three words, and it would all be in like prose, like it wouldn't be any lines or anything. It would just be a, a disaster. Direction. Yeah, Lots it'd be a stage total direction. stage directions. And so we just, you know, we just act it out. And uh, I'd be like, well, like, maybe let's shift it in this way. Um, so I don't know why that wasn't a, a quicker fascination for me. But I'd always been in love with like creating stuff and creating stuff with my friends, especially. Yeah, I think I think for some people, there's a bar there that they it's hard for them to get out there. Yes. Yes. Um, and um, especially, I think, at that age. Mm -hmm. I, I think when people are in middle school, 
they're particularly harder on themselves, yeah. you know, you, you tend to be more insecure. I mean, there's, there's all these biological things happening. Uh, puberty, to name one. There's puberty. Uh, uh, middle school, <laughs> I think everybody suppresses middle school after they get, get it's terrible. to a certain age. It's, it's like It's an awful time. To, it's like, an awful time for everyone. So like the last thing you want to do is put yourself out there to your peers. Yes. And anything that's vulnerable. So at that time, yeah, yeah, like I lighting, I mean, I love lighting and obviously I'm still working mm -hmm. um, behind the scenes and doing a lot of that, but. Um, yeah, I just, I think, I think it's just the, the building of character and getting to explore different parts of like my psyche and mm -hmm. trying to navigate them in a way that suits the character properly. It's really fun. Well, talking to actors, I find too that um, acting helps them get in touch with different parts of themselves. Yes. Definitely. It's like mini therapy sessions. It is. Like every rehearsal you're like, I didn't realize that was an issue that I was, a, <laughs> I was having. And then you work through it. <laughs> and, you, and you think about it and you're like, wow, that draws that emotion out yeah, of me. Yeah, absolutely. And you had no idea that that was something that was like a trigger or something that affected you in, in sort of your emotional baggage or lack thereof. It, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just, it just like bubbles up these things. And so yeah, I think that that was where I really got my start. And you know, all throughout high school, I just auditioned for everything I could. Like right after you're in town, I was like, I have the bug. And I auditioned for this other musical and like outside of the theater. Does the, Essex the have a pretty good program? They have I don't... a great program. Okay. Yeah, uh, Britt Flynn is directing it right now. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she's doing a great job. There's, they got, uh, they do a musical every year. They do a one act sort of thing, and they're still yeah. doing. It. So it's like three one shows act's a year. One in the fall. One, one act's in the in the winter actually. Oh, that's yeah. the winter. Okay. Because uh, when I was there, I don't. I think with the pandemic, it, it's been challenging to get back in. But um, we did these things called like the one act festivals. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so we'd be traveling around like Vermont and uh, northern New England, mm -hmm. um, and we would sort of just be presenting and going to like these like. Festivals. Yep. Basically. No, this is an actual festival yeah. program. And so, so it's yeah. a huge, it's it's a huge deal. And I'd say that was also incredibly formative because I met a lot of people from different schools, mm -hmm. making different kinds of art and having different upbringings. And like a lot of those people, I still keep in touch with and are trying yeah. to actually work on between the Willows Project. And sometimes it's very insular in Vermont. Absolutely, this community is is this. <laughs> There's big. a lot of biofeedback. Yes. Because it's very, you know, I mean, it's a cute little town, and and we there's we all know each other. Exactly. And and so getting out there and meeting creatives from other states, especially at that age, can be very, um, you know, very enlightening. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I mean, like, just getting to see how different people interpret theater was just like, it just bubbled that love for it mm -hmm. in me. And then, so I think, like, I, I mean, just all of these things kind of smash together. And it's like, infinite, too. I mean, that's the other thing is a lot of people tend to think there's a certain rigidity mm. in, like, structure and, and, and how you're supposed to behave yeah. on, on stage and all those things. And that's, it's an art form. So technically, there are no limits. There are no limits. There's guidelines that you can mm -hmm. follow. But, <laughs> but you don't have to. And it's more fun when you don't. It's way more fun when you don't. It's way more fun when you don't. Yeah. Which, um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to quickly, so we've talked about, what other groups did you work with um, growing up? Um, uh, so my first theater outside of uh, the Essex School mm -hmm. District, um, I worked with Stowe Theater Guild. Okay. Um, I yep. did Heather's The Musical with them, and then I ended up doing Mamma Mia. Um, and then I worked with the Flynn uh, Summer Program when that was sort yep. of a thing. Um, and I did Sweeney Todd and Show Choir. Um, and then since then, I've worked with Vermont Stage a lot with uh, their like young playwrights festivals, and yep. I was in one of their shows recently in a Bake Off. Um, yeah, so just kind of like really you all around. Also the map. did I know you did lyric? I did do, just do lyric. I did lyric. Um, and who are you in? Lyric? I was I was Shrek. I mean, come on, Shrek the Musical. Yes, it come was on, great. You got the lead. I know. <laughs> Don't discount yourself. It was it was a pretty remarkable experience. But yeah, so I, I mean, I just like I want to meet people. Yeah. I want to get connected with our arts community. I think we have such a vibrant arts community, and there's so many beautiful, in, incredibly brilliant artists in Vermont. We are. I mean, it, like. It, Per capita, it's kind yes. of out of control. It's out of control. Like, there's just not enough space for everyone who's so talented in Vermont. Well, I think Amazing. Vermont breeds a certain renaissance person. Yes. Um, and people have a lot of interest. I mean, that's what you do in the winter. Yeah. Like, yes. like how do you keep yourself productive <laughs> when it's cold for six months? And here you do theater. Yeah, you, you do a lot of, like, art projects, and mm -hmm. you have a lot of things that keep you busy indoors. And and uh, theater's one of those things that's that's very enriching. 
Yes. Um, during the colder months. It really and, is. Um, so I do think it's, it's wild. It always blows my mind uh, the quality of the work that volunteers in Vermont do. Yeah. Um, in, in comparative to other parts of the country, it's it's kind of out of control. I mean, I would say out of control. It, it is it out is of control. Really I mean, because we don't have a lot of people. I mean, you know, the entire state, six hundred thousand people, yeah. and you'd go to a market like a major market, like in Austin, Texas, or something where there's one point two million, and I would say they have the kind of capacity that even just a Burlington area does, and yeah. and, and that's saying a lot. And that's a very creative place. A super creative um, place. Yeah, and I think that like. What and that, again to lead into the between mm -hmm. the willows thing, I think a lot of what we're trying to do is provide a space for artists, and especially like this is not to discount anybody, but I think it can be really challenging to make art a career path up yep. here. And so I think like when I was growing up, everyone was like, "Oh, I have to leave, I have to leave, I have to leave." And I think what we're trying to do is like, no, you can create art here. Like yeah. we want you to have a home here where you can create art. And that's what a lot of other theater companies are trying to do too. Well, I but. really appreciate that because yeah. I know that there's a huge talent drain. Absolutely. Um, and it's it's a major it's a major factor in a lot of our programs at St. Mike's or UVM. Yes. Where um, you know, there's just no there's nowhere to go there's, after school. Mm -hmm. Um, and, to, and to really pursue your field and hone your craft, you know, everybody has to go to New York or they have to go to Boston. Yeah. Um, and they do it, and then maybe they come back here. And then maybe they come back, because they're like, you just get this bug for Vermont. You're like, you leave and then you're like, I don't know if I want to live outside of Vermont. Well, I, my, I imported my significant other, and um, <laughs> he lets me know a lot that Vermont's a lot like the Shire. Yes. Lord of the Rings. You can leave the Shire. You can leave the Shire, but you always have to. You always end up coming back. It's just a thing. So, um, and and I know because I left for I left for 18 years. Yeah. Um, and here and, you are. And here I am. I was able to come back. So I I, I fully appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and I also I really want to thank you too. I mean, the more we can get younger people engaged in the arts in Vermont and build up that community, you know, the better it's going to be for us as a community. So Absolutely. what you guys are doing is, is, is really exciting um, because that's really what we need in Burlington. We need people who are younger to be doing fun and exciting things so people feel like they don't have to flee. Yes. And that's, that's the goal. Yeah. And, and I, like, I think we've been super lucky in that you know, all the different arts uh, mm -hmm. companies and, and different theater companies are really supportive of what we're trying to do. And it doesn't, f like, I think also a big thing of what we're trying to do is not be like this with mm -hmm. other people. Because, yeah. and, and, and it's like, because that, because I mean, theater feels like that a lot of the time, not like in Vermont, just like everywhere, mm -hmm. you always feel like you're competing against other people to get the job or to do whatever. Money yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, it's like, I think we, we are in such a collaborative art form. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to be togetherness and built around togetherness. So, well, the Vermont community is incredibly collaborative. I mean, exactly. the, a lot of, a lot of the stage managers or lighting techs and, and actors, they move between companies. It's a very fluid fluid yeah. um, and supportive network that we have up here, which I do think is unique and special to our region. Absolutely. And I'm, 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 I'm really glad to hear that. So, um, you know, if somebody who's watching this, if somebody. before we start digging it, yeah. <laughs> uh, wanted to get involved with the local theater in Burlington, what would you tell them? I would say just do it. Like, I. I how do they? No, but yeah. how do they oh, find how? out about? Yeah, how do you oh. find out about auditions? Yeah. How do you how do you take those initial steps to get involved? I think for me, I, obviously I had the benefit of living around here, and so word of mouth is is huge. But if you're just moving to Vermont, I, um, social media was a big thing for me, and I, I I think there's a lot of like Facebook groups that I sort of utilize to kind of like get in tune. Like there's the Vermont Theater Network. Mm -hmm. There's you, VT Call. Lit, like there's there's just a ton of Facebook groups. So VT Call, um, if you want to tell them yes. what that is, it's uh, so it's it, v, it's like a it's a Facebook group essentially where uh, people will put like calls audition calls for auditions and it's mm -hmm. it's plays it's um, occasionally short films or or, or real films um, I say real films and, and air quotes but longer films <laughs> um, feature, -length fe films. feature length films as it were um, uh, and so like they'll, they'll just put calls out and you can kind of get your foot in the door okay. um, but really once you just start doing it you'll you'll start hearing about them and if you're actively pursuing it mm -hmm. um, 
you can call any of these theater companies and they'll help you out. Like, especially we're, we, we love connecting other people with other theaters. What we like to do on our Instagram is like, we'll share like Vermont Stages show or like Lyrics show on our story. And um, especially if they have auditions coming up, just like trying to get other things out there because yeah. You know, it's it's not just about us. It's about the community, and we we want this community to be thriving. And, and you don't want it to be an echo chamber. Exactly. It's like it's not just us. You, yeah. you should work with other people. You should get to know other people. Well, because art always gets better the more people who are engaged with it. It's, it's you know, as a collaborative medium, it's about the hybridization of like the brain trust. It's a necessary factor. It, it is. I, I couldn't agree more. So thank you, thank you for letting people know that because yes. I I do get calls and questions about that quite a lot, and um, I I. Know know some people it, it, it's harder for them to figure it out um, so we have to we have to talk about between the willows yes we have to we so uh, <laughs> between the willows <clears throat> is a queer owned and operated theater group yes um, and I believe you guys are about three years old at this point um, we're one year actually we are we're fresh little babies okay fr okay so it's a year yes yeah, so it's a year um, um, and so how did how did between the willows come to be um, so Nicole uh, my business partner and I were both the co-founders um, and co-artistic directors, as it were. Uh, we, it started in high school. Like, like the idea and the, the, the bubbling of thought started in high school. We were chatting a lot about what we wanted to do, especially post high school. We were both planning to stay in Vermont, at least for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to create shows together because Nicole is such a brilliant choreographer and just such a brilliant dancer as well. And so I, we, and, and I, don't really dance, although I respect the art form, and I'm trying to get better. It's okay, you have um, to know each other's strengths. Yeah, exactly, and yeah. so like, like, how can we, but we wanted to work together, and we wanted to produce something that was like new for us. Um, and so a couple years ago, uh, ab about half a year before Between the Willows' inception, um, Nicole was like, I wanna put on a dance production, uh, and it's called The Four Seasons, and I've been thinking about this for a few years, um, and I was like, okay, great, that sounds fun. Like, where can we do that? And, and she was like, well, I want it to be outdoors. And I was like, great, let's do it at my parents' house. So we just put on this show like uh, over the course of a summer um, and it ended in August. We had two showings. Um, I, think, I think it was the same night. We, we had an early showing and a night showing and that was it. Uh. Um, and so people came, people came and left donations and um, we just had a bunch of our, our, our dancer friends or people that were not dancers and wanting to learn. And um, yeah, we had a show and, and it was so fun. And it was just like the process of creating really sparked a lot of joy for us. And I think from there we were like, we need to make more, we need to make more art together. <laughs> and so it just kind of catapulted and we were like, what were we gonna do? What were we gonna do? Um, and, we so where did yeah. that lead that that led <laughs> uh to nicole i, I was like mm -hmm. i want to do something but we don't know what we want to do and we're throwing show ideas at the wall and trying to see what sticks and nothing really sticked but then nicole was like i have an idea i want to do like a greek story but you write it and and I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. make me a make me a PowerPoint. And so she made a PowerPoint, which is like the goofiest little PowerPoint ever. But it totally just made. I was like, oh my god, I connect with this. Yeah. And so we just, I you know, over the course of like the next month, I just like like banged out the script for Beasts of Crete. And I was like, ta-da! <laughs> and she's like, oh my god. It came from a PowerPoint. It I came did from not... a PowerPoint. That's the oh story. Gosh, that's All good things come from a PowerPoint. <laughs> And, and so that's, that's where it started. And you know, then we immediately jumped into the business formation stuff. Um, you know, I, we're, neither of us are business majors or anything, and so no. we're kind of uh, off the cuff, but like, I that's really- That's how people end up as uh, business arts administrators, yes. is, is usually they learn on the fly. Yeah, and I, you know, to give credit to Mariah, I, I, you guys have, given us a lot of opportunity with Main Street Landing and like gifted us with so much. Well, you guys are, you're an incredibly talented group and, and uh, we love what you do, so. Thank you. And so, so, so yeah, I mean like. It's true. They gave us a home to do it and I, I think, you know, the rest is history. So but let's, let's go back to that first production, The Creep. Yes. And, and, and so um, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about the process. Please, yeah. So um, you have a PowerPoint. Have a PowerPoint. You created the script in a month. Yes, <laughs> which sounds, Unfeasible, but I just—it I, was—it was an idea. What was the length of the production? 
How long was the yeah. show? Yeah. Uh, it was like a two hour show. It's like 100 pages of text. Wow. That's impressive, right? Which, it, and obviously, you know, revisions mm -hmm. were to come and like, oh, yeah. uh, the, but a lot of, like the main text itself was about a month, month and a half. That's impressive. Um, and it, but it was just so addictive. Like the content was so fascinating. And just like working out like queer relationships and like power plays and dynamics and everything, it was just fascinating. And so, I mean, and plus you're working with a story that is already like, decently well known but yep. you're sort of like making it more contemporary and modernizing so it. you had a guideline anyways which probably yeah. helps with this you kind Absolutely. of put the template over and then you get to throw your own ideas into it yeah a lot of like i mean it's a lot of the character development so like i, I mean i i knew the basics of the story and i did a lot of cross research while i'm talking about it but a lot of it is just like my background knowledge with theater and plays and reading plays and mm. doing plays um and then utilizing sort of the bare bones of what these Greek myths are and then amplifying them in this different way. Which is kind of fun. It's fun to actually look at look at some sort of text or some sort of baseline yeah. um, literature, right? And then be like, okay, how do I how do I make this into what we're trying to do with it? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> because that almost gives you those building blocks. I, I, I can see how that that helps. And then you're like, oh I'm gonna take this one and do that with this. Yes. And so then they just kind of build on each other. Yeah. Which is super cool. Yeah, and, it was and a great show. Plus, I had Nicole being like, "This is great," <laughs> well, <laughs> and just boosting my ego. Come on. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Positive reinforcement is is the key to that. So, like, this just like really beautiful collaborative process with Nicole and just creating this baby together was really. And, what and, just... and it was a wonderful show. I mean, you guys. It was last. Uh, it was last, uh, last summer. August. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, from what I remember, it sold out. It did. Yeah. We sold out opening and closing. Uh, we oversold out closing, people. <laughs> we had Don't some tell me that. We had some well, it, <laughs> we, 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 it, was, it was in fire You're code. Well it was in fire, fire code. code. So okay, thank you. Yeah, thank it was you. like 80 seats. So, okay, like, all right, yeah. yeah. Okay, Anyways, uh, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we sold out a couple. Which of the is nights. amazing. It was incredible. We had a we had an opening night gala. And people loved it. People loved it, which I mean, was like, was... I mean, obviously super affirming for yeah. us. Like that was such an incredible cast and crew. They just gave their all out on the stage and trusted me with this baby. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of feedback about how it really resonated with the yes. audience. Yeah. And uh, you know, as somebody who created that you know, ha creating work that actually, you know, people take home and helps them like process their own what's going on in their lives yeah. is probably the highest level of art or the highest level of like a praise. pat on, yeah, yeah, praise that you can possibly receive. It was, work. I mean, I, I had some people that I really respected in the art community come up to me during even intermission when I even done with the show and they were like sobbing oh. and they're ta just talking to me about like, like oh my god this like i these are things i hadn't thought about or things that i hadn't processed and just like they're navigating it th with the characters on stage and wow. i'm just like i was just in awe and i mean i'm like it's such like a giddy little kid moment i'm like i didn't think that i i just wrote it because it was something that was exciting to me and nicole and it was so it's you know i i was hoping that people would come see it but yeah but you never you never know sometimes especially when you're doing personal journey work if it's gonna resonate and be carthetic for the audience, yes. or if it's just sort of the self-involved journey for yourself. And, and and to have that kind of affirmation is is really wonderful. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was shocking to, to say the least. Uh, not to say that like yep. the work that they yep. did was not warranted, because I mean, they, they worked their butts off to create that. And it, it, so just the whole process was incredible. Now, um, so I wanted to uh, talk a little bit too about upcoming productions. Oh, let's uh, please. Um, so uh, you know, you do have something coming up at the beginning of May. Yeah. Um, I believe it's a, a cabaret at a the Off cabaret. Center. Yeah. Um, will you tell our uh, tell our audience a little bit more about the cabaret on May tenth? Yeah. The so um, the cabaret is sort of an opportunity for uh, our friends in the uh, theater community to work with us, um, even if they don't necessarily feel comfortable auditioning for shows or or like whether it be a theater production or a dance show um, and just also to uh, connect different art forms so uh, we have a wide range of like we have some burlesque performances we have some dance some comedy um, by Max Higgins will be opening the show for us on May 10th oh, wow. um, and then we have some I, I don't know if we have any scene work for this one uh, but it's like musical theater singing and then regular singing 
Um, so it's just like really trying to uh, provide the audience with a, a sort of diverse artistic uh, experience. Yeah, and the Spring Fling Cabaret. That's it. I, I like the spring fling. Yeah. <laughs> that I mean that that might be a great thing for you guys on an annual basis too. It seems yeah. Like so it's, it's a, a quarterly. We hold cor quarterly cabarets. So okay. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Let's talk about that. So in January we had our first cabaret, um, and w sort of what that entailed was. Uh, it was like a three hour long special because <laughs> we didn't anticipate how many people were going to sign up, and we just let everybody do it. So it was a it was a long performance, but it was action-packed and the audience was on the edge of their seat for three hours so I applaud yeah. them first of all but it, I mean it was just invigorating it was like really incredible performances great energy from the audience and just like laughs and crying and it was like it was just like this really ephemeral experience and so we were like we have to keep doing this mm -hmm. um, so the idea is that we do them every three months or so so we'll have one in May and then we'll have one in July to sort of promote the juniper tree mm -hmm. and then we'll have one in October and that's great so it's be like a seasonal a seasonal exactly thing. so if you're interested make sure you check out their website yeah, this, um, yeah. And, and and take a look at that uh, if you do miss the spring fling is is the um, is it sold out yet uh, it gets it, it so, sells out pretty quickly, but tickets tend to sell a little closer to the event, so I would get on it sooner. So if you want to, if you want to get tickets, you probably should get them now. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to wait until July. Exactly for that one. Exactly. <laughs> um, so uh, in, in, in so how do you do the cabaret? Like, is it, it do you work with a local artist? How do you? I mean, what is the cabaret? What what does it entail? Yeah. So the idea, at least for getting the talent, um, is we sort of just post on our social medias and we and we put out um, forms for where people are able to sign up mm -hmm. um, and that allows them to get involved at a like whatever level they want and they fill out the form they give their name their pronouns all that mm -hmm. sort of thing um, and yeah they'll just tell us what they're performing and give us a little idea so that way we can mm -hmm. kind of judge and see if it's a good fit for us and so far everything's been a good fit. So. But, I mean it's just very inclusive. So exactly. and, and and the beauty of that is like when people come and they put their heart in their sleeve and they're working hard and they're you know it, it, there's something about that energy that always produces great fruit. Yes. Yes. It, it creates great art. And that's what, and that's really what we're doing is just like trying to provide yep. an opportunity for artists to do art. An it, expression. Yes. Absolutely. And express themselves and 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 that can be like the hardest thing. Yes. It can, especially if you're like in the middle of a huge long production process. So if you have something you <laughs> want to do at the cabaret, make sure you go see Rye. Yes. Because it is an affirming, positive, great experience. There's no reason to be fearful. Not okay? a Okay? Do not come in there with fear because they are going to love you. Oh, we do. Okay. We love every single And you know, all right, so so go for it. Yes. Seriously, we need more of that. All you got to do is sign up too, <laughs> especially for the cabarets. Like you just have to, uh, you just sign up and, and you know, we'll be like, Sounds good. <laughs> we do have a we do have a person limit in order to try and and keep the time down. But but that come on, if you got an idea, go see Ray. Exactly. Um, so uh, I'm gonna get quickly to um, so getting into our work together. Um, you were you were chosen as our 2024 recipient. Uh, the Main Street Landing Performing Arts Center does an innovative uh, theater uh, it residency program once a year and. Um, and uh, Between the Willows was uh, chosen as our recipient this year. Um, the program, uh, our catchphrase, is to benefit and encourage the growth and regeneration of the performing arts while embracing our community. Obviously, your program completely meets and exceeds all those expectations. Um, so I'd like to kind of get into the juniper tree. Um, yes, yeah. If you could tell our audience a little bit about uh, what you're planning to do this summer. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is Nicole's main stage um, directorial I wouldn't say debut because she started with the Four Seasons, but on, on at Main Street Landing, it's her directorial debut, um, and it's a horror ballet. Um, so it's exciting. it's a really exciting horror ballet based off of uh, the grim fairy tale of the same title, The Juniper Tree. Um, yeah, and it's gonna be it's about an hour long, just like super beautiful, intense um, horror ballet, <laughs> like uh, set in sort of gothic attire um, with like fairly minimal staging and or at least the set design and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to be really awesome. There's going to be some fun gonna be, lighting. There's going to be assume. some fun lighting, some gore. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of really just like tantalizing <laughs> items. Um, yeah, and uh, Nicole, if you've ever seen work by Nicole, if you haven't, uh, you owe yourself to see it in the juniper tree. But um, it's it's going to be it's going to be a lot of work. 
uh, for those involved, but I think it's going to be an incredible payoff. Well, I think I think there needs to be more vampire ballets. In I general. think so too. I think so too. I think we're lacking in the vampire ballet. I mean, department. come on. I mean, they've done everything with vampires. There's no reason. I mean, they're an elegant, yeah, you know, subclass of humanoid. <laughs> I mean, you know, that that's like totally segues into ballet. It just makes all the sense Absolutely. in the world for seduction purposes. It yeah. just seems like it's perfect. the perfect like mythological group yeah. to be doing ballet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's, it's, yeah. I'm, and I assume your costumes will be also highly entertaining. Oh my gosh, yeah. We have a, uh, <laughs> Celeste Piet is our costume designer for the show, and it's just a great team. Are it's you guys really getting ready to, uh, are you getting ready to, uh, have you guys done auditions? Where are you guys at with that? Yeah, them? so we are, we have a cast, we have a crew. Our first production meeting is going to be next Tuesday. Wow. Uh, which is really exciting. And so, uh, just getting this set up for the summer. See, this is a very timely interview. This is a very timely interview. There's Good a lot us. going on, Good. yeah. And and then uh, uh, rehearsals are set to start in May. Uh, Which for, is exciting. Yeah, it's really, really. And exciting. so the show. So the if show. you uh, so, check out check out the cabaret on May 10th yeah. at the Off Center. Um, but you definitely want to check out in August. They're coming to Main Street Landing into the Black Box uh, for the Juniper Tree. Yes. Um, do you know when the performance dates are going to be for that? Yeah. So it's going to be August 9th through the 11th. So it's okay. a, a three days, and then the next week, August 16th through the 18th. So it's two weekends in August. Three shows each weekend, so it'll be uh, six six shows in total. Which is awesome. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and I know everybody out there wants to see a vampire ballet, so make sure you it go. It's not vampires. I'm so sorry. It's not vampires. It's not vampires. What is it? It's uh, it's like beheading and stuff. Oh, okay. Well, then, how did I get that? I don't know. That's okay. Okay. It's He's not so vampires, but it, but it's, but, but it's, it's gothic and it's, it's and gothic. it's beautiful and, yeah, and, super and, gory and gory and dark and <laughs> yes. brooding, and mysterious. But I think there's yes. probably, I think genuinely there are some vampire thoughts, not in this, but in proceeding. It's part of the nomenclature. It's part of the nomenclature. We really like horror at Between the Willows, actually. Okay, well, I, um, don't even get me started. Oh, yeah. I, I absolutely adore horror. So, so we'll, we'll get there. That's not another tangent. Yeah. We, have, we have to wrap this up. Yeah. Ryan and I could probably talk for another three hours. And we probably will. I'm getting the call. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so glad you had me. Thank you so much. Um, make sure to check out Between the Willows. They are a remarkable new young theater group we are so fortunate in Burlington to have you thank you so much for all the work you guys do um, and thank you guys for joining us this month and I'll see you right back here on the waterfront with Mariah Riggs next month <laughs>